looking for answers, a world that's hurting because they've kicked you out of the classroom, out of government, out of society, and yet you're still the same. Your grace abounds more and more. And Father, we rejoice in the fact that we're secure in your love. So we come today, Father, to offer you our worship, our praise. And Lord, we ask that you just meet us here and teach us and lead us. We just thank you for all this in Christ's name. Amen. And as Brian comes ready, we have a, uh, uh, something special. Do you need a microphone no, to introduce it, though? Oh, well, here, I'll leave it here. Come on up, guys. You, you, can, you can be over there. Do you want to do it and then I tell them what it was or tell them now? Okay. The gospel can be proclaimed in many ways, and one of them is through uh, North American Sign Language. So what you see now is a demonstration of John 3.16. Okay, so if we all stand up, we will begin our singing for today. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary to save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood's atoning And I repented of my sin And won the victory Oh, victory in Jesus My Savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Okay, take, take two. 
I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about His groaning Of His precious blood's atoning then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him. And all my love is due him He plunged me to victory Beneath the cleansing flood I heard about his healing Of his cleansing power revealing How he made the lame to walk again And caused the blind to see and then I cried, dear Jesus, come heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me. With his redeeming blood He loved me ere I knew him And all my love is due him He plunged me to victory Beneath the cleansing flood I heard about a mansion He has built for me in glory and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing out there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him, and all my love is due Him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Come behold the wondrous mystery In the dawning of the King He the theme of heaven's praises Robed in frail humanity In our longing, in our darkness How the light of life has come Look to Christ who condescended, took on flesh to ransom us. Come behold the wondrous mystery He the perfect Son of Man In His living, in His suffering Never trace nor stain of sin See the true and better Adam Come to save the hell-bound man 
Christ the great and sure fulfillment of the law in him we stand Come behold the wondrous mystery Christ the Lord upon the tree in the stead of ruined sinners hangs the lamb in victory see the price of our redemption see the father's plan unfold bringing many sons to glory grace unmeasured love untold Come behold the wondrous mystery Slain by death the God of life But no grave could e'er restrain him Praise the Lord he is alive What a foretaste of deliverance How unwavering our hope Christ in power resurrected as we will be when he comes. What a foretaste of deliverance, how unwavering our hope. Christ in power resurrected as we will be when he comes. Let us love and sing and wonder, let us praise the Savior's name. He has hushed the law's loud thunder, he has quenched Mount Sinai's flame. He has washed us with his blood, he has washed us with his blood. He has washed us with his blood. He has brought us nigh to God. Let us love the Lord who bought us, pitied us when enemies called us by his grace and taught us gave us ears and gave us eyes he has washed us with his blood he has washed us with his blood he has washed us with his blood he presents our souls to god Let us sing, though fierce temptation threatens hard to bear us down. For the Lord, our strong salvation, holds in view the conqueror's crown. He who washed us with his blood, he who washed us with his blood, he who washed us with his blood will, will bring us home to God. Let us, 
Let us wonder grace and justice, join and point to mercy's store. When through grace in Christ our trust is, justice smiles and asks no more. He who washed us with his blood, he who washed us with his blood, he who washed us with his blood has secured our way to God. Let us praise and join the chorus of the saints enthroned on high. Here they trusted him before us, now their praises fill the sky. Thou hast washed us with thy blood, thou hast washed us with thy blood, thou hast washed us with thy blood, thou art the worthy Lamb of God. Please be seated. We're going to um, read our passage of Scripture in a moment, but I wanted to spend a time in prayer. Uh, we are a praying church. Um, we care about what the world affairs are. We care about you and your family. If you have a prayer request, in fact, that you would like our staff to, to remember and pray for you on a regular basis, there are prayer cards in front of you. I, I would just love you. Uh, if you're visiting and uh, you want to stay connected, sometimes I send out texts this week. I think you, you got like four of them. Um, by the way, before I go, has anybody taking advantage of uh, those songs that I sent in a prayer or in a, in a post, and I said, listen to these songs about Easter. Anybody do that? Well, you still have a chance if you didn't. <laughs> I was hoping for one. <laughs> but uh, anyways, I send out texts. If you would like to stay connected with our church, please take the time to fill out a registration. We don't pepper you with, with you know, endless uh, texts or phone calls or anything. But it's our way of, of, of recognizing you as a visitor and as a friend. Um, prayer requests, always welcome. Um, so let's go to the, the, uh, the Lord in prayer right now and uh, just commit this time to him. Father, in the, the quietness of this sanctuary, we draw near to you. We come before you knowing that you are the God of creation and the mighty God of our salvation. And we praise you for that, Lord. We come before you with uh, thankfulness and joy, knowing that this time on earth is a short amount of time, but then we will see you face to face. We thank you that you have not abandoned us here in our life. You've given us the Holy Spirit who fills us and leads us. And you've given us community of believers. So, Lord, we're never alone. But we draw close to you now at this time, and we ask for your ear as we pray. For our congregation, Lord, we ask that you would just bless us, cause us to grow deeper in you, and increase our influence in this community. We pray, Father, for the event yesterday, for the Easter in the Park. We ask, Father, for those dozens of families that came that they were left pondering the gospel or rejoicing in it at least but father draw people to you may your holy spirit be the one who who convicts and then delivers i pray father that you would just also pray uh, that you would also watch over us as we have a service today dedicated to honoring you through the old testament and the passover setter Father, give our brother um, Tuvia uh, the words and the wisdom to share with us. I pray also, Lord, that you would just watch over Israel. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Lord, and at this time, like no other, it looks as though the whole world is marshalling its forces against you. But we know how that story ends. 
Father, we've read it. We have your prophecy and promises in Scripture that you will honor your commitment to Israel. You will bring them safely through. So, Father, we just ask in your graciousness, watch over the individual families who are spread around the world but are targets just because of the way they look or their name. Watch over them in your grace and bring them to salvation through Christ the Messiah. We commit this to you, Father, now in, this, uh, in your holy name. You are so great to deliver in all these things. And we praise you for this in Christ's name. Amen. In a second, my brother Tuvia will come up and share with us something that many of us have never seen before. But I did want to read a passage of scripture, uh, which is probably the most commonly read passage of this week, and which we enjoyed last week with the demonstration of our young uh, uh, church members and the, the, the ones who, who recited from memory, Matthew chapter 28. I will invite you to turn in your Bible to Matthew 28. I'm going to read... Yep, read the verse. Uh, I want to go on this. I want to read almost the whole thing. <laughs> I think I'll stop it, though, um, at, verse, at verse 9. So we'll read verses 1 through 9. In respect of God's word, if you can, please stand with me. Matthew 28, verses 1 through 9 in the New American Standard, and it reads, Now after the Sabbath... As it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. The guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who has been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where he was lying. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to report it to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they came up and they took hold of his feet and they worshiped him. May God just bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. Children's Church, you're here. <laughs> Tuvia, as a, uh, a member of Jews for Jesus, has been with the uh, organization, the ministry, uh, since its inception, I believe in 1976, 75, 73. Okay. But uh, he uh, was raised, I believe, and uh, came to faith while in Israel, in Jerusalem, or in Jer Israel. You can, okay, he was discipled. In Israel, he's going to clarify all this because I just know him in part, but he knows himself pretty well. So, um, but anyways, uh, as a as a Messianic Jew, uh, he has a special standing, I believe, doubly blessed right now. And Tuvia, would you please come on up and share with us the message of the Seder? Thank you. Thank you for the ooh, thank you for the invitation to be here this morning. I'm delighted to be with you all. We can, I don't blow you out of here. Thanks, guys. Okay, that's great. Yeah, with a name like Tuvia Zaretsky, you know I've come from a faraway, strange, exotic, kind of weird land. I'm from San Jose. <laughs> um, but behind the facade is a whole world that would be very strange to most of you. Uh, I did not grow up in a Christian home. I grew up in Judaism. I didn't come from a home that was only monolingual. My mom's family came from Austria-Hungary, and my mother spoke seven languages. They came from Austria-Hungary because they were being persecuted, and were the only ones on our side of the family who survived the Holocaust. 
living here in the United States. My father's family came from Belarus. His grandfather was murdered in a pogrom and sent my grandfather to Canada, which is also why I'm here in North America. So our world is very different. And this morning, I'm delighted to be with you as a brother in Christ. Something dramatic happened, and my world was changed at the age of 23. And uh, I don't have the time to tell the whole story. I will just tell you that I was in Southern California, finishing up my college work and working with a drug clinic, and I ran out of answers. And a Christian who I had did, done everything I could to embarrass every time she tried to tell me about Jesus, found a way to urge me to talk to the God of my forefathers. And when I said, why should that God speak to me? She said, oh, he made a promise. He said, ask, you receive, seek, you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. Sound familiar? Whose words are those? She didn't tell me that. But I went out and I prayed the words of Jesus and I spoke to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and he answered me. I said, I want to know who I am and I want to know who you are. He showed me part B first. I'm a broken, depraved sinner. And getting to know him was only possible through Jesus the Messiah. So that was, uh, that was a turning point. And if we can get to the next slide, I want you to see something. Um, I want to be able to tell you the story. I, I don't have the time to do it this morning because that's, it's not about me this morning. It's about what we're seeing here. But the little booklet on the right side of the screen is the story of how I came to faith. Uh, Hineni in Hebrew means here am I. And that's what I said to my synagogue congregation at the age of 13 reading from the prophet Isaiah. And I said, God, here am I, send me. I had no idea I'd end up here. <laughs> but I want to be able to tell you the story. Um, if you'd like, there's a the brochure that you received. Everybody should have at least one of these or one per family. There's a coupon on the end. If you tear that off and write on there uh, either an email address with your name, so I know how to address it, or your address, I'll send you, if you just send me the email, I'd love to send you a digital version a PDF that you can share with as many friends as you want. Uh, if you just want the paperback, I'll be glad to send that to you, make sure I got a, a good address that I can mail it to, and I will do that this coming week, okay? That's uh, a way that you can connect with us. It's, you can also use that to connect with the Ministry of Jews for Jesus. There's a box on there that you can check and say, tell me more about what's going on, and I would love to. My work uh, with Jews for Jesus today, based out, out of Los Angeles, is working among the half million Jewish people in Southern California. Almost half of those people, and probably more, are intermarried. Because the intermarriage rate in the Jewish community in North America over the last 10 years has been over 62%. So I know every time I go to a church, I'm running into people who probably have somebody Jewish married into their family. Or they know someone who is. So there's a brochure back there. You can take that uh, about our Jewish Gentile couple ministry. Um, and we can tell you more about that. Uh, also, it was my privilege. I, I mentioned that, that um, I had moved to Israel shortly after I came to faith here in Southern California. I moved to Israel, and that's where I was discipled for two years. My first church is the Keilat Mishachit Yisraeli, the Messianic Assembly of Jerusalem on Street of the Prophets. And that's my, my home church back over there. In the year 2000, it was my privilege to register Jews for Jesus as a nonprofit religious agency in the state of Israel under the name Yehudim Lama'an Yeshua, Jews for Jesus. And it says in our charter that we're there to share the gospel of Messiah Jesus from the Old and the New Testament. And we're registered there now. And miracle of miracles, the Tel Aviv and Jerusalem office of Jews for Jesus combined is the largest branch, mission branch, we have anywhere in the world today. We have 12 in Southern California, about 14 in New York, 
55 in Tel Aviv. Very, very exciting things that are happening. I'm going to show you a little two-minute video in, in, a, in a while here during this presentation. But some phenomenal things are happening. So uh, you can leave that little co coupon. I'll tell you the story, how I came to faith. I'll send it to you. And this will help us go through the program this morning, OK? Now, yeah, today is, is Easter Sunday. But most Christians have no idea that it was actually one of the biblical festivals of Israel from Leviticus 23. Yeah, it was called Chag Abikorim, the Feast of First Fruits. And the fact is that Jesus was resurrected on the Feast of First Fruits. Now, Passover, which is this table, and all these items are things that I have celebrated Passover with in our home growing up, and we still do this with our family. Yeah, it's kosher to do that as a believer in Jesus. You'll see how it all comes together. But there were three festivals culminating uh, or launching with the Feast of Redemption, which is Passover. It's to remember our redemption. And I will tell you that the headline of this whole festival is not just that Israel was delivered out of slavery in Egypt. That's a headline. But the bigger headline is that the God of Israel is a real God who is a savior God. And he kept saying, he kept saying to Israel, keep this festival as a remembrance, as a memorial to me, to him, that they might remember his deeds and his character of love and mercy and grace. A powerful God who is a deliverer God. And that's why we keep the Feast of Redemption, the Feast of Passover, because it tells the gospel story. And I don't think they've necessarily thought about the word gospel story. But that festival, the Feast of Redemption, Passover, is the Besorah. That's Hebrew. Besorah means good news. Good news. It was always good news to remember God redeemed us from slavery in Egypt and he's with us today. That's the kind of God he is. My brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you about Passover and about God because the story points to him. But I need to tell you how this points to you and me and to Jesus. So you ready with me? We're going to fly through Passover, but I want you to be able to see all of this. Let me take you to, into the scripture, okay? The story of Passover is embedded in, in Genesis chapter 12. I want to give you the, the uh, Exodus chapter 12. I want to give you the general picture here, and then we'll go ahead and, and uh, tell how that connects, how people celebrated it and how it connects with us. This is the Lord's Passover. On the night in Egypt, when we were delivered out of our slavery, God said, you can have a meal. Take a lamb. Your lambs shall be without a blemish. A male old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you'll keep it until the 14th day of the month. That's when there's a, a full moon. This is a, a, a leap year on the Jewish calendar, on the Hebrew calendar. It's a, by the way, it's a lunar calendar, so it's a little different than the Gregorian calendar that we follow. The 14th day of the month is always a full moon. 22nd of April, promise you, it's going to be a full moon. And Jewish people will be celebrating Passover all around the world. I preface that by saying it's a, a leap year because it's coming a little bit later this year. We have an added month in our, in, our, uh, in our leap year. So the people were told to take a lamb, one year old, without a blemish, keep it by our house, on the night that God brings the tenth and last plague into Egypt, we were to have a meal, sheltering with instruction from God on how we were to do it. We were also told in that second to take blood from the lamb and put it on the doorpost and the lentil of the house. The instruction is very careful here. You're going to have a roasted lamb, unleavened bread, and bitter. The unleavened bread, actually, we're going to eat for a whole week. 
is part of another festival that happens in the midst of Passover. So Passover was the night we were redeemed from slavery in Egypt. We killed lambs and we ate the meal in our homes, our last night in Egypt. But from that night on for a week, we observed the Feast of Unleavened Bread during which we eat only matzah, unleavened bread. We'll show that in a minute. And we also ate bitter herbs on the Passover. Those three things are crucial to the feast. So in this manner we were to eat it, we were supposed to have our belt on, our staff in our hand. We're going to leave in the morning. This is a farewell feast to Egypt. But the last line is the one I want to point out. This is not Israel's Passover. This is the Lord's Passover. This is Yahweh's Passover. And he says, don't ever forget it. So we come to the next section in, in here. This is actually to be a memorial feast. Now he goes back a little farther in the passage. and He says, I'm going to go to the land of Egypt on that night. I'm going to strike down the firstborn in the land of Egypt. You're going to see why it was focused on the firstborn male of every family. Because look at the last sentence. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. Once more, I am Yahweh. This is the Lord's Passover. This is his name displayed across all the Middle East, across all of history, his character revealed. Then he says something very important. The blood of the lamb is central to this story. Hear that. The blood of the lamb is central to the story. We were supposed to put the blood on the doorway of our house, on the lentil, on the two side posts, and God said when he sees that blood, he would pass over us. It's by the blood of a lamb that our lives would be spared from the judgment that was coming against the Egyptians and their idols. The blood of the lamb. The blood of the lamb. Sound familiar? Watch. When Jesus celebrated Passover, this is the theme that was resonating with him and his disciples because he came to fulfill that whole picture. In this day, so this day shall be for you Memorial Day, that last paragraph. Keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout all of your generations as a statute forever. Keep this a Memorial Day. So we find Jesus coming to, this, to Passover. Jesus in his flesh, born among the Jewish people. We'll tell, when we tell the story, you'll understand why it was with the Jews. But he came to fulfill this whole picture. And he came to celebrate Passover, as was his practice as a, an observant Jew. And he brings the disciples into the city of Jerusalem. They're looking for a place to celebrate it. Um, in our, uh, Passover is always celebrated in our homes. Uh, we would light candles as we start the, the festival. He hasn't done this yet in the story that we read here. But we light the, the candles in our homes to separate the day from the night. And those of us who are Messianic Jews like to remember, we light these candles to commemorate Yeshua, or HaOlam, Jesus, the light of the world. But I'm getting ahead of myself, okay? So he comes to the city of Jerusalem. We, now we find Luke 20, and I'm going to be working from that passage if you want to follow along with, with me or, or look it up later today. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread called Passover was approaching. So Jesus comes to the city of Jerusalem. The day came... Of uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Remember, two festivals begin on the same night. Passover lambs are slaughtered, and on that same night, we begin to eat unleavened bread for the week. And he sends uh, Peter and John saying, go make preparations for us to eat the Passover. And so the Passover requires a few things. The, it requires three things, in fact. It requires bitter herbs, We'll find, first of all, a Seder plate in the middle of our table. Uh, the Seder plate uh, just tells us the order of the festival. And there are all these food items on it. But you have um, bitter herbs, unleavened bread, and the Passover lamb. Uh, it starts with the, the bitter herbs, aror, and that's uh, onions, horse horseradish, leeks, garlic, scallions. It reminds us of the bitterness of our slavery, slavery in the land of Egypt. We also have on the Seder plate a bone. 
a shank bone of a lamb. We don't eat lamb at Passover. Most of us don't because the, the lamb could only be offered at the temple in Jerusalem. But the temple was destroyed. 586 B.C. Nehemiah and Ezra rebuilt it. Destroyed again in 72 A.D. by the Romans. And so rather than risk offering an unauthorized sacrifice, we take a bone, a shank bone of a lamb, and help us, let us uh, tell that story as we tell the story of the lambs. And the third thing we have to have on the table is the unleavened bread. Now, a lot of us in the Western world think of Leonardo da Vinci's portrait of the Last Supper. Remember all the disciples on one side of the table? Right? Anybody know what Leonardo's bread looked like? Italian bread, right? It's a nice fluffy loaf, right? That's Passover bread. <laughs> uh, my wife tells me I have to give Leonardo some slack because how do you paint that? His lies are like a square. We keep a bag on our table. I don't know where this comes from. It's very unique. The bag is said to symbolize unity, but it's divided into three compartments. Three and one. And if I ask my grandfather, well, what does the three and one mean? He, my grandfather said it was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The next year, my father, when I asked him that question, said, oh, that's the Levites and the priests and the rest of Israel, which only explains why in the Jewish community where you have three Jews in discourse, you have four opinions floating around. But we take one piece of matzah out of here, the middle of the three. Now, I love to talk to our children when we celebrate that festival and tell them we are mono. We believe in one God who's made himself known in three persons, even as that bag symbolizes unity, but is divided in three. But we take the bread that comes out of this bag, we break it in half, one half is wrapped in a linen cloth taken out of the room, hidden or buried for a time. We won't see that again until the end of the Passover. Jesus celebrated this, as I said, with his disciples. And we read in, in Luke 22, verse 1, that they went and found everything just as he told them. And they prepared Passover. And when the hour came, he was reclining with them, saying that I eagerly have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. That's the whole reason Jesus came to the city of Jerusalem. He told his disciples, we're going to Jerusalem, and there I will die for you, for me, for the sin of the world. The good news in the midst of Passover, the Lamb of God has taken away the world. Well, one of the ways we, we guide ourselves through the celebration is uh, with the Haggadah, and that we use that to tell the story of the Passover. And this is a very traditional Haggadah. Um, I love it. It's beautiful. It has illustrations and diagrams and so on for the children. But uh, it misses the most important part. It misses the real good news. There's nothing in the traditional Jewish Haggadah about Jesus. Of course. That's part of the reasons I never heard about him. Why I never knew that he was, was uh, uh, celebrating this. Um, those of us who are Messianic Jews, still, I said, still celebrate Passover. It's our joy to do that. And we wrote a book called A Messianic Family Haggadah. If you'd like to try celebrating Passover this next month or sometime in the, the future, um, our office uh, makes those available. I've got I think five or six copies on the back table. If anybody wanted to purchase one, I'll be back there afterwards and, and help you with that. But we want to tell the story of the Passover. And uh, uh, the other way that we, we guide ourselves beside this is to count how many times we've raised our cup. And there are four cups on the night. The first cup is called the, uh, oh, we still there? I got to be way, way behind me now. OK, sorry. Sorry, Brian. So there are four cups. Um, each cup has a, a different name, and it tells us where we are in the Passover. First time we raise it, it's called the cup of sanctification. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Second time we raise the cup, it's called the cup of plagues. That's the only one that's not mentioned in the New Testament. In the midst of the evening, we eat supper. Third time we raise it, it's the cup of redemption. Remember that one. And the last cup is the cup of praises. So we find... Uh, 
Jesus is going to celebrate Passover, uh, and he raises the, the cup of, uh, with a blessing. It says, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brought forth fruit of the vine. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam. Hamotze lech... Sorry, hamotze... I'm doing the, the other, other blessing. Borei pri ha'gefen, who brought forth the fruit of the vine. In verse 17 and 18 of Luke's Gospel, we're told, at the beginning of his Passover, he took a cup. That's the first cup of the night. There are two mentioned in Luke's Gospel. And when he'd given thanks, what I just recited, the ancient benediction, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves, for I tell you, from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. This was his last Passover during his earthly ministry. There is yet a Passover to come when he will be with all those who know him and love him. So we, now we tell the story. Uh, the children are integral to this, this whole celebration, and so they're going to ask four questions. Um, and those four questions are in your brochure on the inside cover. It just begins with, why is this night different than all of the nights? Well, now we're going to tell the story. And in doing so, we have to go all the way back to Genesis. Because this is the gospel unfolding. You have to go back to the fall to realize why we needed good news. Jesus, sorry, uh, back, in, back in Genesis chapter, chapters uh, 2 and 3, we see God created human, man and woman. And in that moment, death and dignity, he also gave free will. That resulted in the fall, separation from God, distrust, disloyalty, beguiled by the evil one. But God in his mercy and grace saw that was all part of his plan. And he made a promise in Genesis 3.15 that he was going to send the seed of a woman by whom he would redeem and reconcile all humanity to himself, to those who would believe. He provides the seed of a woman who would crush the head of the adversary, the evil one, Satan, who would be wounded in the process. Well, it's going to take a seed and a woman and a family and a tribe and a nation, and it could have been any nation, but God singled out the through a Chaldean named Avram, and that family became the Hebrews the Jews. Abraham has Isaac. Isaac has Jacob. Jacob, 12 sons. They go down into the land of Egypt. They've been told in Genesis 12, 13, uh, 12, 3, that God was going to bless all the nations of the earth through this line. Israel is going to be the channel for blessing. Like the aqueducts that bring water to this dry, thirsty land. Israel was going to be the channel through which the blessing of was going to come to the nations. And it didn't mean that we were going to be automatically grandfathered into that salvation. We were simply God's instrument. And so, 400 years in Egypt, the nation grows to more than 2.5 million. And at that point, King Pharaoh becomes frightened, makes us slaves, and we cried out to God. So we took parsley at our Passover table, the Lord like this. I can do this and we'll try okay <laughs> um, we take parsley dip it in salt water we remember tears cried in Egypt as we wept before the Lord that he might set us free Rabbi say it's not enough just to taste the salty tears we have to have our own and so we get a matzah and we dip into the fresh ground horseradish root. Get a scoop about the size of half a teaspoon. No, I'm not going to eat this. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But what happens is your nose what runs, your eyes water. We call it Jewish Sudafed. Everything starts. But it effectively brings tears to our eyes. 
We have a mixture made of apples, walnuts, raisins, almonds, brown sugar, wine. It's an apple mixture. It's called charoset. It uh, is very sweet. It looks like mud. And it reminds us of the substance of our labor in the land of Egypt. In the bitterest hour of life and bondage, the sweetness of God's redemption is always drawing near. We look back to Egypt and we remember this, that God's grace and mercy was at work behind all of this, for he is a redeemer God. Well, we, we cried out to God. God heard our cries. He sent, sends Moses to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh hardens his heart. God brings 10 plagues against the gods of the Egyptians. The next uh, cup that we would drink is called the cup of plagues, and we remember the 10 plagues that came against the Egyptians. I do not have time to go through all 10 of these. Every single one of them mocked the gods of the Egyptians. But I will just tell you that the last plague was the death of the firstborn male, man and beast, because Pharaoh said he was the son of Ra, the highest of all Egyptian gods, and every male, man and beast, was sanctified to his service and worship. God is going to execute judgment and end Pharaoh worship on that night. And so he brings plagues upon the land, and he tells us there's only one way to escape the plague, and that is to go and take a lamb for every family. Select a perfect lamb. And tie it by our homes for three days, morning of the fourth day of the, now the full moon of the month, slaughter the lamb, cut the blood, cut the throat, draining the blood into a basin, and carry it out of the house and roast it whole over an open fire. The lambs are brought into our home with the bitter herbs to remember the bitterness of our slavery, and we'll remember that slavery and the bitterness every time we eat that. We have the unleavened bread to remember we left in haste. And on this night, God said he would come upon the land of Egypt. He told us, take hyssop, leafy or feather bush. I'm at Exodus 12, 20. There we go. Thank you. Dip hyssop into the blood and put some of the blood on the top and both sides of the door frame. No one of you sh uh, shall go out until morning. I want you to see this. There's a picture of a door, but watch here. For the father would dip hyssop in the blood and sprinkle that, making a sign upon the door, splashing it, as he described, on the lentil and the two side posts. And from that moment on, the doorway was sealed. God said in that night, when he comes upon the land of Egypt, when he sees the blood on the houses where we live, no judgment, no death would fall upon the houses of the Hebrews who were dwelling under the blood of the Lamb. You understand why I love this festival? Built into the fabric of it was the story of the Lamb of God who takes away the judgment, sin of the world. And when Jesus came, he fulfilled that picture for you and for me. And even for those who this moment don't believe and trust in him, for the sufficiency of that blood was enough for all the sin of the world. Efficient, that is applied to, saving those who trust in him. If you're listening today or you're here and you've longed to have something more than just religion, but you've wanted a relationship with the living God, this was the way, the blood of the Lamb, given for you and for me. Passover was a festival to remember our redemption from slavery in Egypt. But Jesus gave it to us to remember what he'd done for us. And in the midst of Passover, I'm going to show you the last two elements of this. This whole story come down to these two things for us. Remember I said the story 
is God's story. The focus is for you and me, but it also points to Jesus. Immediately after we eat supper, the children run and they look for that piece of matzah. Remember the one that was wrapped in linen for a time? They bring that back out. They show everyone at the table. And then we break small pieces the size of an olive. My grandfather did this when we would celebrate Passover. My father would do this. I've done this with my children. We still do it. But did you realize Jesus did this? For we're told in Luke's gospel, we'll read there. He took some bread and he gave thanks. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who's brought forth bread from the earth. He distributed it to them and he told them, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, this is where communion comes from. This is where the Lord's table comes from. It comes from Passover. And in that Passover festival, Jesus was saying, you can be delivered from death and judgment and destruction by his body on the cross of Calvary. He did this, he said this for us only hours before he fulfilled it in the agony of the cross. The very next thing that happens at the Passover celebration is we take the third cup of the night, the cup of redemption, and in that moment we remember our redemption from slavery in Egypt and we drink it with great joy. But at his Passover, Jesus took the cup of redemption. How do I know that? Look at Luke 22, verse 20. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. The cup after supper is the cup of redemption. And Jesus held that aloft and he said, as often as you drink this, this is the new covenant in my blood. How painful must that have been for him to say during Passover? Not the blood of the lamb down in Egypt that we remember now. My blood, he said, knowing the cross was right before him. Jesus came to fulfill the festival of Passover, the festival of our redemption. He did that on the cross, went in the grave, and lay there for three days. That third day, the feast called Chag HaBikorim, the feast of first fruits. Most Christians don't realize that that Sunday morning, we would call it Sunday morning, that first day of the week, as it's called in the Bible, was the feast of first fruits because Jesus was the first fruits from the grave, resurrected. You and I have that same hope. It depends on the blood of the lamb sacrificed for us. That's why Easter Sunday, why Resurrection Sunday is such a joy. It is the fulfillment of the promise that death cannot hold us. Because God, back in Genesis 3.15, promised the seed of a woman by whose blood we are redeemed. Passover ends with such amazing words. Hodu l'adonai ki tov ki le'olam chasdo. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endures forever and ever. My brothers and sisters, we are welcome not only to his table, to, but to his eternal life. For Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed and raised again from the dead. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and grace, the power of not only the cross, but your resurrection power to redeem us from the plague, in the Egypt of sin by the blood of our Messiah. Lord, speak to hearts this morning, wherever they may be, in this congregation, around the world, those listening online. 
May your gospel message reach their hearts. Bless and resurrect them. We pray that your name might be magnified. Hodu Ladonai Kitov. We give thanks to you, O Lord, because you are good. Ki Leolam Chasto. Because your mercy, your loyal loving kindness, endures for all eternity. Amen. Pastor Simpson, thank you. Thank you. Um, Brother Tuvia, I want to let you know you've gave us history and tradition, and you made it theology when you said Christ died for us. Because Christ died for the world, if we can understand that. But do you, do you embrace the fact that Christ died for you and for me? Christ came to be that sacrifice. He knew what he was doing. God had planned this out before the foundation of the earth. Salvation is offered to all. Will you accept it? Christ died for your sin. You must, though, come to the cross. Come to the cross. Admit that you are a sinner. You have to ask for God to forgive you. And he'll become your Lord. That's where we're at. Um, all of us, I pray all of us are rejoicing in that. All of us have embraced that. But if not, if, if I can talk with you, I would love to sit, talk with you, and pray about it. Um, but at this point, as Brian gets ready to come up and lead us in our, our, our final song, um, I just want us to um, have the opportunity to see this Embrace it because it opens up the Old Testament to us. Our brother will be in the back by his table to answer any questions prior to going over for lunch. I just wanted to close in prayer right now at this point and then um, have Brian dismiss us with a song. Father, we, just, uh, we come to you humbly. Humbly because we've seen the story of the cross. We know that Christ died that's a historical fact. But Father, do we truly understand that Christ died for each one of us? For it wasn't the Romans or the Jews that put him on the cross, but it was our sin. And Father, he did it willingly. He knew what his mission was. And so Father, I just ask that we would understand this and by the power of the Holy Spirit, have that come into our heart, into our mind, and through our will. Sometimes we are stubborn in how we view God. But Father, I just pray that you would speak to us in such a way that we come and we kneel before you. And we say, thank you, Lord, for dying for us. Thank you, Lord, for paying for my sin, which I've gladly asked you to forgive me. And Father, I pray that I will be the best servant as I serve you as Lord and Savior. And Father, because of that, we're changed. Thank you, Father, for this, for anybody who's committing their life or recommitting their life. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. I'll stand up, we'll sing our last song. So. God sent his son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon. 
An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know He holds a future And life is worth the living just because He lives How sweet to hold a newborn baby And feel the pride and joy he gives but greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because christ lives because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because i know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives and then one day I'll cross that river, I'll flight life's fine, no war with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know He reigns. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. We're going to close in prayer in just a minute. Um, just a reminder, no evening service tonight. And another reminder, please join us for lunch. We have plenty. We just love to get to know everybody and fellowship together. But let's pray. Heavenly Father, just a wonderful time to reflect on all you've done for us. And you planned it from the beginning. Um, when, you, when, the, when, the, when sin came into the world, you had a plan. And um, we see it demonstrated here all the way to the cross. And today we celebrate that Jesus not only died for us, but came back to life. Um, thank you for the love and the fellowship today. In Jesus' name, amen.